Okay, so I'm going to, we, we have composed uh, some overview of the health impacts of climate change in Israel and some evidences and recommended uh, responses. And the um, cl main climate change uh, impacts in Israel are a warming trend with more frequent hot days and nights, and that's an important point, longer and warmer summers, increasing the frequency, length, and severity of heat waves an increased frequency of heavy rainstorms and floods parallel with the redistribution in the amounts of precipitation. And you can see here a timeline showing the different extreme weather events. So we see some droughts, we see fires, and the last uh, two, three years have been uh, uh, along this uh, trend, although we've seen that there is uh, variability. Uh, recently, there was a report of the, the State of Israel uh, for climate uh, change uh, policy, and I will give some highlights from this report, uh, actually. So this is just a few photos showing uh, extreme events in terms of floodings or dryness. And this is a change in the amount of precipitation from the 50s to uh, two years ago, and what we can see that while the average precipitation doesn't change much, there is some decrease, we see substantial redistribution with drying in, in, in populated area areas and actually shifting in increased rains in other areas. So um, this is one of the manifestation of uh, climate change in Israel. It's not necessarily the reducing amounts, but rather re redistribution. In terms of heat, uh, we see an example, the uh, heating of the uh, minimum uh, temperature in the summer in Jerusalem, and we, we, see, we see a substantial increase of uh, one and a half degrees at the night in the night temperature. And we see also an example for an extreme event, uh, which we see more and more frequently with uh, very high temperatures all, all around throughout the, the country, temperatures exceeding 40 degrees and uh, reaching 50 degrees in many, many areas. The predicted uh, temperature increase in the, in the next decades, of course, depends on the scenario, but it varies between about two degrees to four degrees uh, towards the end of the century, substantial uh, temperature increase, very much uh, according to what's predicted in the, in the region. So the increased uh, heat actually increases the uh, uh, cases of dehydration and heat stroke. And this is the number of visits in emergency rooms in the last 10 years. We see an increase. We see here uh, how it is differentiated between different age groups. And again, we see that the elderly and the young are more vulnerable. And this is the monthly or annual distribution of the visits. And we can see that there are more visits in the summer, of course, and there's and and this is the increase that I've shown you here. So that is definitely something that is increasing and 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 and, and ongoing change. With respect to air pollution, we see an a, an overall decrease in PM two point five, possibly uh, due to the use of natural gas instead of uh, coal burning and also more strict restrictions on emissions from uh, cars. Uh, we have high concentration of PM10 uh, due to suspended urban dust and also uh, due to outbreaks of uh, desert dust from um, Sahara, from the Arab Peninsula, from um, the Iraq-Syria border. And so we see an increase in the frequency and also changes in the sources and their uh, severity. There is uh, overall high average population weighted ozone exposure, and we see that Israel is actually very high in that respect. Uh, this is probably due to the high emissions of NOx uh, from the power stations uh, and, and traffic and also volatile organic compounds. And this is much higher than what you see in Europe or in the OECD countries, uh, which is this uh, light blue here. So substantially higher uh, and, and, but this doesn't seem to change over uh, the years uh, substantially. Uh, we do have high NOx levels, mostly from transportation, power plants, trains, and ports, which are major pollutants. And uh, various uh, studies that have been conducted in Israel show causality between asthma, cancer, cardiovascular, and birth effects in various uh, studies, uh, which uh, we can then 
provide these studies if uh, it's of interest. With respect to uh, vector-borne disease, uh, we see an increase in the numbers of uh, West Nile uh, infections in Israel, and this is the average 2011 to 2017, and this is 2018, and we see also uh, some shift. Uh, of course, this is one year, but we think we see some shift in the onset of the disease, and this is how it varies uh, annually in different areas of, of uh, Israel and the West Bank, and uh, we, we see an increase overall over the years with many more cases in central Israel uh, starting to pop up. There is a potential uh, risk for dengue and Zika, but we don't have identified cases uh, in Israel, although there are some cases, as you can see in this map in Southern uh, Europe, but in Israel, we have not identified yet. In terms of uh, Lishmania, so we see also a uh, a trend, an annual trend of an increase, and a study uh, conducted in Israel suggested that, that uh, there is a temperature effect. So high ambient temperature at the early night explains uh, the higher proportion of, uh, of this uh, variance that we see. And so we expect that if this is going to, uh, to be the trend, then we expect to see higher trend of Lishmania in Israel. We also, uh, due to uh, drought conditions and less precipitation, we have lower water levels in the rivers and higher organic content leading to human uh, leptospirosis. And these are some rivers that have been infected. Um, this is in, uh, also in, in the Golan Heights, uh, where we had a few uh, cases in the last three years. And this is the number of cases uh, also uh, from the northern part of uh, Israel uh, in, um, <clears throat> in 2018. So the challenges for Israel is that uh, despite the fact that we have a high acclimation rate and we have many sensitive populations, we have elderly people, we have poverty, we have working that, uh, workers that work outside, like agricultural uh, building, etc. Uh, people with pre-existing conditions like obesity, uh, cardiovascular, etc., and the uh, population of immigrants that are vulnerable to uh, the changes. Uh, also, Israel is isolated energetically. We, we don't have contacts to other countries in terms of uh, providing uh, electricity. So if there is a substantial demand, we might find ourselves in, uh, in, in, in a case of emergency. There's also increased forest fires during the hot seasons, but the hot season and the dry season are shifting towards the autumn. So we see severe fires in December, and this is October uh, between October, November, and December. And this is also seen in, in Eastern uh, uh, Europe. And of course that leads to personal safety issues and high air pollution uh, levels. With respect to water shortages, um, uh, there is an effort for desalination and reuse, reuse of sewage water for agriculture. So the Israel is making very good use of recycling water and also desalination. And in that respect, uh, we're not that sensitive anymore to uh, the precipitation as source of water. Another challenge is the air quality. And of course, uh, extreme precipitation events that cause flooding. So this is also due to pure, uh, 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 to poor uh, infrastructure. So the general recommendations of the committee was to adopt a disaster risk reduction strategy and make the climate crisis an element of Israel's security threat map. And specific recommendation for allocation of funds were given. And some of them were recognition uh, of the climate crisis as a national strategic threat to prepare for various impacts of changing climate, in particular for extreme events at the national and local city levels. Um, there are recommendations for climate adapted urban planning, such as shading and changing of materials and isolations, strengthening uh, ecosystem sustainability. So we are actually putting more waters back to the rivers and uh, things like that, keeping uh, 
um, green corridors, etc. Uh, there is a, a recommendation for improving, improving meteorological forecasting by investing in new com computing uh, facilities and increasing models, uh, um, forecasting capabilities. Of course, for land use change, afforestation uh, to fight desertification and strengthening social re resilience. With respect to uh, air quality, uh, we have established a law for Clean Air Act, updated air quality standards, improved air quality monitoring. Um, the government is encouraging the use of electric cars, development of re renewable energy sources. And you can see here in the desert, a very large power station, uh, solar power station. And also we have solar farms and a few hydroelectric uh, facilities. And uh, there are some traffic restrictions that are already imposed in metropolitan Haifa, but they're probably going to be imposed in other metropol metropolitan centers in Israel to reduce um, uh, <coughs> air pollution. And um, so there is uh, also recommendation for implementation of heat health warning system and action plans, systematic collection of a epidemiological data on morbidity and mortality to improve surveillance and uh, epidemiological studies. Uh, there is a recommendation to have a, um, a database that will combine epidemiological data with climatic, environmental, ecological, and demographic data, and uh, to increase the collaboration between different disciplines and also between the different minister ministries and the government. Um, there is a special attention to vulnerable populations and so social programs uh, and uh, medical um, uh, programs in the uh, community. Use of advanced modeling and climate health impacts predictions to guide national and regional policy making will become uh, hopefully more implemented and strengthening public awareness of educational programs. Finally, I want to show you that this uh, report had a graphic, uh, sorry, there is one more, uh, with respect to um, <clears throat> vector-borne uh, diseases. So developing an efficient vector surveillance and control program by monitoring the density and geographical distribution of hosts and pathogens. And uh, collaboration between countries should be a priority for health agencies to address cross-border challenges of disease transmission, even for countries that lack diplomatic relations. And there is an example here for a consortium between Israel, Palestine, and Jordan to, uh, for surveillance on uh, infectious disease. It's called uh, MESIS. This is the uh, abbreviation. And I think this is a model that should be followed in the region. Finally, I would like to show you a graphical summary. It's in Hebrew, I apologize. But basically, uh, there is this summary of a report where we have the health um, impact and how Israel or the, or the region in that respect should be, uh, should change or, or uh, get ready to, uh, to uh, um, deal with it. Some icons and some highlights from recent studies, scientific studies that have been uh, taken in, in, in Israel and also warming, extreme weather events, uh, vector borne disease, uh, diseases and food security. So I think this is something that we could also think in our report to do something according to these lines for the policy makers. And here I'd like to end. Thank you very much.